Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I've been waiting and wondering. I was like, I thought this was Eagles Cowboys hate week. I'm trying to understand because I hadn't seen anything from Philly 500. I've been getting every day there sometimes two text messages with links to videos where you know my picture's up on there he tells us how delusional how crazy you know we are and how great his team is you know remember remember when he was talking about his defense you know oh our defense is so good you're not going to be able to run against them you're not going to be able to pass. they're going to be smothered they're going to be the 85 bears we don't need those stinking coordinators that we had before we're going to be awesome all I got to say is <laughs> Sam Howe, who just threw over 400 yards, the left hands up who are going to be getting rid of Riverboat Ron, whose riverboat crashed. I'm surprised he wasn't the first one fired. I can't believe Josh McDaniels was let go before Riverboat Ron with the new ownership. But they hung 31 points on him. Kurt freaking Cousins, without an offensive line, without a defense, hung 28 on him and had him scared. So some of these games have been a little bit close. But I'm trying to say, where is Philly 500 and telling me how delusional I am that the Cowboys got no chance in hell? And finally, we got something. Now, I haven't watched the whole video, but let me start with this first of all. Fuck them birds. Fly, Eagles, fly. Now nah, we shoot those birds out of the sky. Stupid dumbasses managed to give up a third and 30 to my sexy arm. Pathetic defense and team. No wonder I own those piece of shit frauds every damn year. Don't get me started on the fans. You boo me while I earned a respected award. Losing the Super Bowl was just karma for you fuckheads. I can't wait to drop 100 on your heads next season while being the daddy of the NFC East again. Okay, so, all right. So here's where I, I started listening to a bit of this video from Philly 500. You see my hair is crazy because this is a crazy week. And if I had some honey, I'd pour some honey on me because I'm going to be, you know, I'm not poking the bear. I'm putting a foot in the bear's ass, okay? But I'm just sitting here listening to Philly. And, you know, first thing they try and do now, now listen, I'm going to say I, I've given the Eagles credit where credit is deserved. They did a great job last year bringing in free agents and taking care of holes, you know, getting to the Super Bowl and coming so close to winning was incredible. And I've given them credit for for going to the Super Bowl and losing. I have done that over and over and over again. You know, I don't understand why it is that Eagle fans can't give credit where credit's due. I mean, let's be clear here. So Philly 500, is, his thing is, is Dak Prescott's 8-3 and three record is meaningless. That, that's the first part that I got on it. So I want to listen in to some more of this with you guys. And um, let, let's see. I just want to see what they have to say on it. Because, you know, basically they say Dak Prescott stinks, Dak Prescott sucks, and all that. And it means nothing. Okay, so let's go. This is always a big week when it's Eagles Cowboys, right? And this is a game that I just cannot wait to get on with. Uh, me I too. Think the Eagles are in a great position. Mm -hmm. If they can win this game, if they can beat the mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboys, you're talking about a team eight and one at the bye week. I agree. And the Cowboys would fall to five and three. That would put them legit two and a half games behind the Eagles, and the Eagles would have yep. the tiebreaker on them because well, they until them. we play, even though they're going to play in them Dallas one more time. It's a great position for the Eagles to be in. Can't so argue with that. So much so that I think the Cowboys are really in a situation where they've got to come in and win this game. And if they do win this game, then it's going to be a dogfight the rest of the year because it's going to be two teams very close mm -hmm. uh, to each other in terms of wins. Um, so it's and, a big and, game. And mind it's a big you, game. And the injury report is... is let, let, mind you, let me add something to this because this is a rough stretch for the Eagles. They get their bye week after us. But then having the 49ers, having um, Kansas City, having uh, the Bills, having us again, Seattle, you know, they've got a really tough five-game stretch coming up. And if they lose this one, 
you could see that all of a sudden going down shit going downhill if they beat the cowboys that gives them an extra cushion and in the end i hate to say this but we're going to be fighting against each other between the cowboys and the eagles the lions you know they've got a pretty easy road to hoe i think us and only one other team that they have that has a winning record so go on philly it's going to be key uh this week we got to hopefully get some guys back and we do have good news jalen carter was back uh at practice even though i think it was a walkthrough today he did uh he was full practice if there would have been you know a regular practice here here's what the injury report looks like right now for the eagles so you have tight end grant calcaterra concussion He's not practicing. Bradley Roby, shoulder, he's not practicing. Uh, Boston Scott, personal reasons, did not practice. Uh, that doesn't sound like something that will limit him from playing. Uh, defensive tackle Jordan Davis, hamstring, he was limited at practice. And then they opened up the 21-day window for Cam Jurgens. This is really good news. I think getting Cam Jurgens back at right guard, because he was playing really, really well, uh, will be key for, will be big for us. It will be big. Um, so I really am happy at Cam Jurgens. They also signed Julio Jones to the active roster. He's not coming you know, back and forth between the practice squad and then playing. He's on the team, and I like it. I, I really liked what Julio Jones uh, gave us last week. Mm -hmm. uh, guard Sua Opeta, hip, limited practice. Go Jack on, let's, Stahl, okay. ankle, come, come on, Philly, practice. get, get no, those Cowboys. Shoulder, limited practice. And then I said Jalen Carter, full practice, uh, walkthrough. So uh, that's really, really Full practice um, walkthrough. Good news with Jalen Carter, you know. And I, I got to say this. Um, when I look at the, the Dallas Cowboys and I look at the Eagles, and we'll get into the, to the you know. Can we get into it? Because what the Eagles got to do. I should have watched this um, first. But I, I can only I watch really Philly one time. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how the Cowboys, who's got a pretty stingy uh, secondary, how are they going to stop A.J. Brown? Because I think A.J. Brown is on a tear right now that is is – you know, it's it's unheard of. You don't see this very often from not alone, not not any receiver in the league. Here's AJ Brown's last six games. Okay, let me Nine try catches, and see if I can get Nine catches, 131 yards. Okay. This game is important. It's okay, a very important game um, for the Eagles, mm -hmm. for the Cowboys, specifically mm -hmm. the Cowboys. I think I think it's all time. Mm -hmm. It's an all timer for the Cowboys and. You know, the trade deadline came, it went. Uh, the Eagles, they got Kevin Bayard at the trade deadline. Now, they didn't get to do it on the day of the deadline, but they made their trade you ahead know, of time. And to me, I'm just that was the wondering most significant trade that was Where's all the bravado the guy who is going to start. of and by December, the Cowboys you know, suck? Late December, when he We're going playoffs, to destroy Kevin them. Kevin Bayard's going to be very impactful. Got to be patient with okay, him right I now. Okay, I can't. Come as on, Phil. But he's. Okay, let's go to the next section. On the live stream, and. And Mark goes on a tirade about the Cowboys not doing anything, nothing. And I tell people, just wait. Just that, that, wait. Isn't even that ain't even current. That ain't even current. online because that's what these Cowboy fans do. Mark makes videos of me talking about Kenneth Gainwell and stuff. He's actually accusing me of being the guy that was texting, <laughs> with Ken, uh, texting against Kenneth Gainwell. I have nothing to do with it. I don't. I don't DM or, or message players. I don't do that. Okay. That's not how I work. Okay. Well, he's spreading lies. You know it was you. He's complaining. And all I gotta say is this. Oh. At least, at least us Eagle fans, at least we're, we, we tell you what we think. We say what we think, and even if it's against the, one of our players, if we don't like a player, we say we don't like a player. If we think the team is messing up, we think they're messing up. If they, <sighs> we think they miss a draft choice, we're not afraid to say we miss a, they miss a draft choice. That doesn't mean we love, don't love them. That doesn't mean we don't support them. But the Dallas Cowboys, they're the completely different. right? They all were pissed off Mozzie Smith got drafted. They were all pissed off. I what wasn't. do they do? Oh, yeah, I remember. They all cry and talk about how horrible it is. The next day, <laughs> Mozzie Smith is going to be better than Jordan Diffs. Mozzie Smith is going to be better than Jalen oh. Clark. Everybody always falls in line with okay. it. They all get in line. I, I'm, I'm still trying to find out. Uh, hey, friends, Mark Holmes. <laughs> it's your buddy, Cowboy Joe Boo. I want to thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Network.
And he'll go out there and he'll complain, oh, we lost in this, but really can't put it on Dak. Or maybe if they would have done this, then Dak would have had it. Or maybe if they would have done this, Dak would have done it. It's always an excuse for Dak. Oh, and, boy. and he does the same thing with the front office and stuff. Every time they Every don't do time. something and you let your true feelings out, the next day they fall back in place. What does Mark Holmes do today? He puts out a video talking, after his meltdowns, talking about <laughs> why the Dallas Cowboys didn't make any moves. I'll try to put it at the end of the video in my post So he watches them. Okay. It's like, dude, these guys are frauds. They're frauds. You're, you're scared to say what you think. Mm -hmm. I am at least not scared to say what I think. I may be right. I may be wrong. Or you may be a ding tell people what I think, and I don't have to change it up. Do I think Kenneth Gainwell stinks? Yes. And I tell <laughs> people that. Did I tell people Nels Aguilar stinks? Yes. Did I hate the Derek Barnett draft? Yes. Yes. Did, did I say a lot of things that are wrong about? Of course. Everybody lets me know that every two seconds. Okay. So, somewhere in there, he's going to say that Dak Prescott's wins against the Eagles. But see, here's the funny thing. I ain't heard him say, we're going to destroy the Cowboys. That we're just going to, you know, we're the better team. We're gonna, I, I, I think he's scared. Because I'm sitting here looking at Daddy Dak, and Dak stinks against the Eagles. I mean, you know, here it is, 19 of 39 completions, 48% four, uh, completion percentage. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, that was his rookie year, wasn't it? Oh, that was a victory, though, wasn't it? Oh, okay. All right. But but then, you know, he follows it up with, you know, say, 18 of 31, you know, for 145 yards and no TDs and uh, three interceptions. Wow. Oh, that was 2017, wasn't it? I tell you what, let's look and see. What, what do we have uh, a little more recent? Let's see. Um, the last three games, 21 of 26. 80.8, well, damn. Three TDs, no interceptions, well, damn. How about the next time? Because that, maybe that was a fluke. 21 of 27, 77.8. Well, damn. 295 yards, 10.9 yard average, five TDs, five TDs, and zero interceptions? Hold up. Hold up, hold up. And then last year, 347 yards, 77.1 completion percentage, 9.9 .9 yards, three TDs, one interception. So hold up, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Mr. Dak Trashcott, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me in the last three games that Dak Prescott's played against the Eagles, he's had 11 TDs and one interception? Okay. They're meaningless. They're meaningless. Right. All right. So there we have it. Philly 500 is definitely feeling a little bit scared right about now. Or at least that's the way I take it. I don't get the regular bravado, the trash talking. He seems very, very reserved right now. So Philly... When you waking up and telling me how much we suck? Grocery store, I used to actually swallow it, pause, but, you know. Oh, Joe, you used to pack and you used to... I used to pack and swallow. I used to do a lot of stuff. Dude, that should be your, like, intro. <laughs> yeah. You know? Your intro well, is just no like, 